What's good, YouTube? It's me, Coach 67 Sports TV. Shout out to the awesome and amazing LDBC, Lions Den Boston community. Shout out to the greatest university in the world, the Southern University, home of the Mighty Jaguars. In this particular video, I'm going to give my post-fight analysis of the Giovante Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia fight from last night. Uh, before I get to the man fight, I just kind of want to break down uh, the undercard. And, you know, at one point, it seems as if there were such high hopes for Gabe Rosado. Uh, at one point, you know, they thought he was going to be this, this real good fighter. And it's astonishing how far he has fallen. You know, in the undercard last night, you know, he just took a, a savage beating. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to retire or he's going to wrap it up or hang up his gloves. But after last night's fight, he needs to call it a career because he got savagely beat up. And considering at one point, uh, Showtime just was pushing him so hard in terms of being like the next star. And it's obvious he's not that guy. So it's just time for him to hang it up and call it a career. Uh, now the next fight that really kind of caught my attention <clears throat> is David Morrell Jr. Uh, he had an impressive knockout uh, in the co-main event. And to be truthful, uh, he has he's a good fighter. He has a lot of potential. And post fight, he called he called out David Benavidez. Now, he doesn't even have like fifteen fights at this point, so I don't know if he's really ready for a David Benavidez fight yet. Now, if I was David Benavidez, David Benavidez, I would fo focus all my attention on Canelo Alvarez in terms of uh, getting the fight for the undisputed super middleweight championship of the world. Because even though I thought <clears throat> the fight between David Benavidez and Caleb Sweet Hands Plant. I thought it was a draw personally, but even with that being said, uh, the fact that David Benavidez won that fight, he's the second best fighter in the super middleweight division to me at this point. He's clearly the number one contender. And if I were him, I would be pushing hard, extremely hard, for, for a fight with Saul Canelo Alvarez. Now, I know Canelo made it clear that uh, he's not fighting any Mexican fighters, and in certain instances, even like Hispanic fighters or whatever the case may be. If I was David Benavidez, I would do everything I could to get that fight. I would call him out. I'll make it clear and make it known that, hey, if you don't fight me, you're a duck. Whatever the case may be, whatever I have to do to get under Canelo's skin and get that fight, I would do that to get that fight and get a shot at that undisputed super middleweight championship of the world. Now, if he cannot get that fight, uh, if I was David Benavidez, I would focus my attention to David Morrell Jr. And I think it would be a good fight, but I would strongly favor De David Benavidez in that fight. I think David Morrell Jr. is a good fighter, but like I said, he doesn't even have 10 or 15 fights yet, so I don't know if he's really ready for a fight with David Benavidez. It just might be too early for him, but if he says he's ready, hey, if David Benavidez can't get the fight with Canelo, he just might well take the fight with David Morrell Jr. Now, moving to the main event between Giovante Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia, you know, I gave my pre-fight analysis on episode six of Bayou Sports Talk yesterday, and basically going into the fight, I pick uh, Tank to knock out Ryan Garcia in the 6th, the 7th, or the 8th round. Uh, and essentially, that's pretty much what happened. Now, in terms of uh, the end ring, uh, in terms of the ring walk, you know, Ryan Garcia, you know, he had praise and worship music for his ring walk. Whereas, on the other hand, uh, Javante Tank Davis, he had uh, Chief Keith. You know, bringing him to the ring, and I kind of had a flashback uh, to 2012 when I was working at another school. You know, prior to now, so it kind of brought back some old memories. You know, Susan, my class used to love Chief Keith at that point, so you know it kind of gave me some flashbacks from a coaching and teaching standpoint. But in terms of the actual fight, uh, you know, I said in my pre-fight analysis that Ryan Garcia he has. Hand speed, he has power, but 
his footwork, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. In addition to that, uh, one other thing I didn't point out, you know, he doesn't have good head movement. He doesn't move his head at all. Uh, his ring IQ is very low, and all of those things kind of came to fruition in the fight. Now, in terms of the fight itself, in the first round, uh, Ryan landed, landed, you know, a couple of decent shots. And then at that point, he just kind of got, got overzealous, and he got carried away, and he was just overly aggressive. And, you know, Tank was patient. Tank fought a smart fight, you know, after the first round. And I think, you know, at some point during the second round, I think, Ryan got to see a buzz tank a little bit. He really didn't hurt him bad. You know, he buzzed him a little bit. And then just Ryan being overzealous, he got carried away. And Tank caught him with a beautiful straight left hand. And he put him down. And to be truthful, I did not think Ryan Garcia was going to get up. But he got up and he continued fighting. And from that point forward, all the momentum swung to Tank. All the momentum was in Tank's favor and... You know, Tank just kind of capitalized, and he took advantage of that. You know, he won the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round. I didn't give another round to Ryan until the sixth round. You know, he fought a little bit better. You know, he used his jab a little bit more. Uh, he kept using the straight right hand in addition to that. And the crazy thing to me is, you know, considering he has a considerable height advantage, you know, Tank is only like five, five and a half, whereas uh, Ryan Garcia is like five, ten and a half, almost five, eleven. He should have just kept, used his height to his advantage, kept Tank at the end of the jab, you know, jab, left hook, straight right hand, uh, jab, straight right hand, left hook. You know, that's that should have been his punch combinations. But instead, you know, he just overly aggressive, just kept looking for the left hook. Now, I know the left hook is his money punch, but the thing about it is, in many instances, it's not a lead left hook, it's a check left hook. And what I mean by that is he used the left hook as a counter punch, not as a lead punch. And he just kept trying to lead with the left hook, and he kept telegraphing it, and Tank could see it coming. He just kept slipping the punch. And, you know, his, his ring IQ was extremely low. And I'm like, bro, like, you have to set up your punches, you know. Jab, jab, hook off your jab, you know, jab, straight right hand left hook. You know, he didn't put together any combinations. He's just throwing one punch at a time. And he telegraphing his punches and Tank could see him coming from a mile away. And then in the seventh round, Tank caught him with a, a nice uh, liver shot, left hand to the body. And, you know, you could see in the replay, because initially when I saw it, I didn't think it was a real good punch, uh, a punch that he landed flush. But once Ryan took a couple steps back and then took a knee, you could see in his eyes and his facial expression, he did not want any more. And I kind of knew at that point the fight would be over. And then watching the replay after the fight was over, Tank caught him with the left hand to the body, to the liver. And you could see Tank's facial expression. He knew he caught him with a good shot. And, you know, Ryan had the delayed reaction. Then he took a knee. And then you could just look in his facial expression, in his face, in his eyes, and you could see, yeah, Ryan didn't want any more. And the referee was literally right in Ryan's face, you know, counting five, six, and he's just giving him the count. And, you know, Ryan's just kind of shaking his head, you know, with his nose bleeding, you know. And he just kind of tapped out. And this is the reason why I know he gave up and he didn't want to go out on his shield and get knocked out savagely. Because usually when the fight is like, legitimately hurt or extremely hurt. Uh, when the referee finishes his count, you know, it takes a while for the fighter to get up. However, in Ryan's case, you know, once the referee reached the 10 count, then immediately Ryan got up and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, he tapped out. He didn't he didn't want any more of Tank. And he knew if he kept fighting, he was going to get savagely knocked out. So, you know, that was it for the uh, fight. And to be truthful, you know, in terms of the fight itself, uh, you know, like I said, going into the, to the fight, in terms of the quality of the fight, you know, at best, this is a main event on Tuesday Night Fights on ESPN back in the day. Uh, uh, ESPN Friday Night Fights main event or a main event, at best, a main event for, ES, I mean, for HBO Championship Boxing. 
So back in the day, this would have been a, a main event. Uh, ESPN Tuesday Night Fights, ESPN Friday Night Fights, or uh, at best, a main event on HBO Championship Boxing. But this is not, there wasn't, in terms of the quality of the fight, it wasn't a pay-per-view caliber event in my estimation in terms of the quality of the fight. Now, in terms of the magnitude of the event, it was a huge event. You know, they had so many stars like uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr., of course, he's a uh, tanks promoter. You know, you had Sugar Ray Leonard, you had Manny Pacquiao, you had Killer Plant. Uh, you had other, you know, celebrities like Mark Wahlberg. So it was a mega event in terms of the magnitude of the event. Uh, not necessarily the quality of the fight, but the magnitude of the event. It was a huge event. You know, it was good for the sport of boxing. Uh, the one thing that I really didn't like was the fact that uh, after the fight, the fact that Tank really didn't take that opportunity to call out the winner of uh, Devin the Dream Handy versus Vasil Hayatek Lomachenko. So hopefully Tank fights the winner of that fight, you know, because they fight in less than a month. So hopefully we'll get, you know, Tank fighting the winner of that fight. But to be truthful, I think in the sport of boxing, it's too much light right. Uh, I don't think we're going to get that fight. Hopefully we do, but we'll see. So that's it for this video. If you saw any value in this video, like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. Also, click the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime I post any new videos. Uh, y'all have a blessed, phenomenal evening. I'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace and blessings.